Blessings for all. I humbly appreciate the privilege I have been given to appear before you today. My name is Wanda Lugo, and I am an elder at Rock Eterna Mission Church in the city of Cleveland, Ohio. I was called to become an elder in 2013. I became ordained in 2015. So for about nine years, I have been enjoying all the blessings that the Lord had given me in this blessed ministry. There is a quote in the Desire of Ages that reads, Every true disciple that is born into the kingdom of God is born as a missionary. And it continues saying, because he who drinks of the living water becomes a fountain of life. And also he who receives becomes a giver. So long before I became an elder, I was already a disciple and I understood my job as a missionary. So becoming a, an elder just intensified this understanding. Today, I would like to share with you from my personal experience, some ideas on how you intentionally can influence another person to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I would like to use the word intentional because really it's not something that comes naturally. Just because you become an elder, it doesn't mean that you are passionate about evangelism. This is what the Lord wants from each one of his children, but there's a lot of work that we have to do on our own. The first aspect I would like to mention is intimacy with God. One year before I was appointed as an elder, God called me in a very special way to prayer. Yes, I prayed every morning when I woke up before my meals, but I think that the first intentional thing that God wanted me to do was to make time to pray, to make time to spend with him, to go to bed earlier and to wake up earlier in the morning to spend time with him before I even ate. This would have never happened spontaneously because I am a sleepy head. So I had to intentionally set my alarm, go to sleep earlier. I have to intentionally set an alarm to wake up earlier and to set some other alarms during the morning so I could spend time with God and still be ready for work on time. Spending time with God in the morning is indeed a very special thing. These hours in the morning really made a difference in my life. Although I have many pastors that I have worked with who are passionate about evangelism, and they were a good model for me on this, I can tell you that my passion for evangelism was born in one of those mornings with the Lord. I started to feel like Jeremiah, that fire burning in my, in my bones that did not allow me to be quiet. And when you have that fire within you, you cannot stop. You have to do something. The second thing for me that was very important was planning. I am not an extrovert. I am an introvert. So God has uh, put a lot of creativity in my mind and everything I have done for him has been planned. I had intentionally laid it out, thought it out, intentionally directed to the certain group of people that I wanted to reach out. So planning is key. For that, you have to be connected to God so you can notice the opportunities that he brings into your life you have to observe carefully where the needs are and take advantage of those opportunities. For example, I can tell you about our neighbors. One day they had a special need, a pipe around their house broke. My husband went there to help them out. Together, when he came back, we made a plan. We planned that we wanted to win that family for Jesus. So we planned to stay attentive to their needs. We planned to show them the love of Jesus. That takes us to aspect number three, the method of Christ. Thanksgiving was coming up, so we invited them for dinner, and we helped them out with whatever and whenever we could. We gave them our friendship, and as we got closer to them, we realized that they were living very sad lives. We gave them all the support we could. We were there when they needed us, even when sometimes it was not at a comfortable time, and then we invited them to join us in our small group. That will be aspect number four. So we invited them to our small group meeting at our home. We gave them love, friendship. At first, it was a little difficult for them because they did not trust people much. But as they came every week and we studied the Bible with them and we share our experiences with Jesus and we celebrated and we laughed, the trust began to grow and they never left. They began to congregate with us in our church. And about six months later, our neighbor got baptized and eventually she brought her husband, her daughter, and her husband brought his cousin. 
Point number five will be the use of our talents. And another occasion, I noticed that we had a group of preteens in our church. They had grown in the church, but they had not made the decision for Jesus yet. Since I like to teach and I can teach young people, I created a study group for them to be instructed. 11 preteens got baptized at the end. As we can see, using our talents intentionally is very important, an important part of evangelism. What you can do, what you enjoy doing, what you love to do, those are means that God can use and he wants to use for you to win others for him. Number six will be to involve others. Lately, God has been encouraging me to engage the church in intentional planning to win others for him. He has given me some ideas um, for evangelism as a church in which I have been able to apply my experiences with them. First of all, we have encouraged the church to pray with the intention of seeking the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we also motivated them to find three to five people's names who they wanted to win with for Jesus. So we collected 63 names total. So point number seven will be intercessory prayer. We posted those 63 names on a wall in our church and we interceded in prayer every time we have service. We prayed for these people at home and also we prayed for them once a week personally or through a phone call. With this plan, I also began to pray for a special person that was my brother Abner. Abner had been baptized when he, when he was younger but have moved away very far away from the Lord. But during these 50 days, he had a crisis and his wife called me to help him out. When I found Abner, he was very lonely, very sad, in a very bad situation. But I prayed with him. I told him about Jesus and I invited him for church. We have a very loving church and everybody received him so lovingly that he continued to attend. To make the long story short, I can tell you that on the 29th of January, my brother became baptized after preaching his first sermon that same morning. Last but not least, number eight, love people as they are. Above all the important things that we could do intentionally, loving people is the most. I read somewhere, evangelism is the art of winning hearts. And really the love of Jesus in us is what attracts people. We can share all the biblical knowledge we have. And if we don't have love, we are going to be like metal that resounds and a symbol that rings. On the other hand, when people feel loved and accepted, even if they don't understand everything we want to teach them, or even if we cannot teach everything, they will come because they feel loved. Let me tell you the story of our friend, Jose. He is one of our newest members in our church. He was a drug addict. He was homeless. He was sleeping in a cemetery across our street. And he also was begging for money in the corner of our church. One Sabbath morning, one of our church members came to him, gave him some money, and putting his arm on his shoulder, invited him to church. Jose said no because he was dirty, but he said that he would come back some other day. Weeks passed by, and like in about two or three more weeks, he was back. He came back. He was clean, he was shaved, and he was ready to attend church. But you know what? He was still tattooed from head to toes. Our brother from church, again, put his arm around his shoulders and brought him in our church building. He introduced him to us, and I can tell you from that very moment, we loved him. Eventually, his wife came too, and they are now both members of our church. Love is not an emotion. Love is a verb. It is action, and we can set up to love intentionally too. As we spend time with God, his love reflects in us. So we go back to the first point, spending time with God in prayer. He is the one who puts that love in our hearts that we can love others the way they are. After some thoughts, I think these are the ways that God has used to help me win souls for him. Spending time with God every morning, first thing in the morning, planning ahead, using the method of Christ, participating in small groups, using our talents, making use of intercessory prayer, involving others, and loving people, all of these intentionally. It is my hope that my experience can be a blessing to others. May we be intentional and let the Holy Spirit of God lead us and win many souls for him. Thank you again for the opportunity. May the Lord bless us all.